He tells stories of heroism as he puts it triumph over tragedy, scandal and redemption. But also since the beginning of Casey Sherman's writing career, there's been a focus on victims of violence, of evil. I wrote my first book 20 years ago and that was a memoir about my aunt Mary Sullivan who was the youngest and final victim of the Boston Strangler case. And it was all about how a family gets justice on its on their own terms. In Sherman's latest book, his 15th, The Victims Are Many. The exact number, in fact, is unknown. I've covered 30 to 50 homicides during my career as an investigative journalist. I've never seen anything this horrific before. Helltown tells the story of Antone, or Tony Costa, a serial killer from Provincetown convicted in 1970 of murdering two young women, but suspected of killing many more. Four victims were found buried in the woods in Truro. Casey takes us back in time here to where Costa lived and met his victims. Then, like now, Provincetown was a summer destination. The crimes so unexpected, out of place. And there was a transient vibe where people would come and go. And as these young women start to disappear, the authorities really don't take it very seriously until months go by and they realize there's a killer on the loose. A Cape Cod native, it was a trip to Provincetown at the height of the COVID pandemic that reminded Sherman of the Costa crimes. The awful story had been long forgotten by many. I remember as a kid wondering if this was even a true story. Is it strange that it just kind of faded away? It almost became a comic book like murder case. The murders themselves after so many years were almost related to you as a joke. You know, the killer was nicknamed Tony Chop Chop. Sherman said court transcripts of the case weren't digitized, but he interviewed investigators involved and uncovered records, some too gruesome to share. Well over a thousand documents, all of the autopsy reports, the unpublished manuscript that Tony Costa had written in his own hand at Walpole State Prison. He really resembles the Norman Bates character in Psycho. He was an amateur taxidermist, you know, really became fascinated with dissecting animals and ultimately that grew into dissecting human beings. It was a case that drew unwanted national attention to the idyllic seaside town. Pulitzer Prize winning photographer Stanley Foreman remembers being sent to the outermost tip of the Cape after a wire story crossed his editor's desk at the Record American newspaper. The editor saw something about two missing women, school teachers, from uh, Rhode Island. And I still remember the chief of the Truro police taking us in the woods and actually showing us where the girls were murdered, showing us the trees, the area. Those girls were both 23, Patricia Walsh and Marianne Wysocki. Prior to that, Provincetown teens Sydney Monzon and Susan Perry had gone missing. Their remains were found near the same Truro Cemetery. He had a, a group of hippie disciples. Uh, they used to call him Sire. As even his closest confidants are hearing the most grisly testimony that I think has ever been read in a courtroom in Massachusetts or anywhere else, there's still a, a flurry of support for him outside the courthouse. Foreman took the photos. 55 years I've done thousands of murders, but he didn't fit the bill when he came out of court. I mean, here's his wife smiling at him. Look at the pictures. She would have jumped up and given him a hug. It's just weird. The whole thing was weird. In Helltown, Sherman not only recounts the bizarre and brutal events of the Costa case, but also the turbulence in the nation at the time. He brings in the perspectives of two literary giants who were living and working on Cape Cod as it was all unfolding. Kurt Vonnegut and Norman Mailer. And I focus a lot on these writers and how quickly they became obsessed with this investigation. Vonnegut wrote a lengthy article for Life magazine. Norman Mailer fictionalized the murders for a book and a film that he wrote and directed called Tough Guys Don't Dance. More than 50 years have passed since the killings. While it's tempting to forget it all, Sherman feels it's more important to remember. We always have to pay tribute to our history, whether it's beautiful stories that live and breathe here in Massachusetts or the dark stories. You know, I mean, we know about Whitey Bulger. We know about the Boston Strangler. We know about Lizzie Borden. We need to know about Tony Costa and what he did. And more importantly, I think, we need to remember the victims here. 
Tony Costa died by suicide in 1974 while serving a life sentence at Walpole State Prison. As for Helltown, it may make the jump from the page to the small screen. Team Downey, the production company founded by actor Robert Downey Jr. and his wife Susan Downey, is in the process of pitching it with Sherman as a limited series.